It is being described tonight as one of the most important scientific achievements in the history of mankind. An American scientist has announced an historic breakthrough in the development of artificial life. J. Craig Venter has put together strands of DNA to create a man-made bacterium. Craig Venter and his team have done nothing less than show that it is now possible for mankind to create artificial life. Uh, I said, it yeah. challenges views of life. Yes. That you can reconstruct it in the lab. Yes. That yes. changes, yeah. uh, I think, views of life and even origins of life uh, once we can really boot something up from scratch. Yes, but I love that expression, boot it up from scratch. Yes. That's very nice. Yeah, we use yes. the software analogy. Yeah, yes. in that, uh, because it is software. I mean, yeah. it's a, what, what, the, well, the whole DNA revolution um, shows that life is all about software. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's just like computer yeah. tape. It's just, yeah. uh, I mean, the cr chromosomes are just immensely long computer it's, tape. It's an inert chemical, and, and you know, people have this notion that they're living things. It, it's, it's just a chemical. Now we can make that chemical in the lab. Yes. And literally, we do boot it up by uh, putting it in a cell. Everyone knows DNA is the code of life. You might not realize it, but you can now buy DNA off the shelf by mail order. And that's where this synthetic organism started. Fenter's team went DNA shopping and bought more than a thousand short strands of DNA. In the lab, they joined them all together in the right order to create a completely man-made copy of the genome of a simple bacterium. Then they put it into the cell of a different strain of bacteria, converting it to the new man-made strain. The final step was the defining moment. The new cell functioned and divided and multiplied. It was alive. Well, Craig, you're obviously proving that real intelligent design works. Yeah, absolutely. It's, but are you uh, sometimes accused of playing God? Uh, it's, it's come up on uh, a few headlines here and there. Yes, but, uh, yes. Th there's a couple different versions. My uh, best friend and colleague that's working with us, Ham Smith, the Nobel laureate, uh, uh, his answer to that is, we, we don't play. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. What, what's your answer? Uh, my flippant answer is, uh, I, I don't play mythical characters. Right. Yes, uh, yes, yes. But, okay. Uh, Jim Watson's answer to the question, are you playing God, is, well, if we don't play God, who will? <laughs> Prior to Charles Darwin, scientists had some rather strange ideas concerning how life began. They believed that living organisms came into being rapidly and spontaneously over a period of just a few weeks. The scientific community believed in spontaneous generation for 2,000 years. And it is a stark reminder that even a majority of scientists can be wrong. But in 1668, Francesco Redi, an Italian physician and scientist, overturned this idea. He suggested this proof of spontaneous generation was nothing more than contamination of the meat by flies. When flies landed on the rotting meat, they laid their eggs. Over time, these eggs grew into maggots. Later, the maggots changed into flies. When scientists ready prevented flies from landing on the meat with a piece of cheesecloth, maggots never formed. يا أيها الناس ضرب مثل فاستمعوا له إن الذين تدعون من دون الله لن يخلقوا ذبابا ولو اجتمعوا له